A few episodes ago, I made this A4 sized LED light panel. So in this episode, I'm going to extend from that. I'm going to make another one, but this time with improved LEDs. They're brighter, a little bit smaller, and a four channel switch. Rather than doing pulse width modulation, which can give you flicker, this one will actually do four levels of actual switching of the LEDs and give you a nice four stage LED remote control light panel. So the parts that you'll need for this project is an A4 sized picture frame, a roll of LEDs, and as you can see in there, these are different from the last ones that I've used. A power brick, a 2.1 millimeter center pole positive barrel jack, suitable power cord. Uh, this one's an actual blade fuse. It's an automotive grade blade fuse, but this gives you uh, the ability to add an inline fuse to the project. The actual fuse itself. This is the four channel switch I was talking about. Four relays in there. Looks complex, don't worry about that. It's pretty easy to set up. That comes with a four stage remote control. And a suitable battery for the actual remote. Of course you'll still need a soldering iron, some solder and a little bit of hot glue I'd recommend as well. Um, for the glass that's in this picture frame, we're actually going to use this this time around and if you have a couple of bulldog clips that would be pretty handy to add to your parts list. We're going to sand up the glass and make it into a bit of a diffused panel. So this will actually have a diffuser that's removable on the front of it to give it a more soft, natural light. Okay, first thing to do is just prepare the picture frame. Do take some care with the glass because it's, as you can see, it's pretty thin stuff. Okay, so at this point, this is where this differs from the previous build. Link to that in the uh, video description. Previously, we just ran our rows of LEDs and we did one large panel with only two connections for up positive and negative power. In this instance we're actually going to divide that up into four so each little section is controllable separately. So we're going to cut our roll of 300 LEDs into 20 separate strips, 15 LEDs per strip. Okay, so there we have our 20 strips, 15 LEDs long each, and of course we're going to be doing these in four banks, so there'll be five strips of LEDs per bank. Um, the two that come with the wires already connected on the end of them, right, just makes life a little bit more convenient, we don't have to add a wire there, so leave those attached. And uh, let's get sticking these to the panel. Okay, so this panel is A4 in size, so it is 210 millimeters tall. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the halfway mark and just mark it on the actual board itself. So what we're really using the center line for is to just start laying down the LEDs going away from the center line, just to keep it as even as possible. So let's start sticking the LEDs, but stop at five. And I'll show you what I'm doing. Now before you get too far into this, take note of what I've got here. So as you can see there, as they're stuck down, there is a positive and a negative line all the way across. And in this case, I've got a couple of wires hanging out that end. But this part is important. So always have the positive at the top and the negative at the bottom and just keep sticking your LED strips. 
next to each other. All right, so just for, before we proceed further, I just need to drill a small hole there in order to be able to poke these wires through. So just do that, it's probably a five or six mil hole. Okay, so just a nice hole like that, and we'll be able to poke the wires through and get everything sticking down properly. Okay, at this point, we can actually solder this up the way we're going to connect each of the uh, four different sections. So basically do this one section, it's independent, and then repeat three more times. So let's solder that one up now and uh, move on. So what I'm going to do is, as I've done with the previous video, this is gonna be a zigzag pattern all the way down over here, connecting all of the positives and connecting all of the negatives. Doesn't matter which side you use, as long as one side is positive or negative and the other side is the opposite. So first things first, I'm actually going to tin the uh, pads that don't have any solder on them already and down the other side as well and then start some soldering. Okay, so on my right hand side, I'm going to use that for all the negatives and I'm going to do the positives on the left. So now we just use our piece of wire and do a zigzag snake pattern and solder that down. Okay, so once you've got that one set, use the tweezers and get, give it a natural sort of bend and come round and grab the next negative connection. So that is all you do to connect the negatives down one side and we're going to do the positives down the other side but with just one little change. So we'll get started and then I'll show you what I'm talking about. Now what we've got here is an extra little bit of wire and we've got these positives connected down here. Now because I've left these two wires on I can cut them off and do this um, all without any connecting wire but what I can do is all of these midpoints um, they're just another form of connection to the positive or the negative rails. So I can bring this wire, because I've got enough of it, I've got no pad here to solder onto, but I do have one right here. Makes no difference, so I can solder onto that pad to connect all my positives together. So let's do that. Okay, so what we've got here is our um, negative rail, our positive rail, all connected up. Now if we apply positive and negative 12 volt power to these two connections, this should light up, testing all of our connections, making sure that there's no uh, dry solders, etc., etc. So we'll do that now. And there you go. 12 volts of very bright, it doesn't come through on camera, but that is um, a lot brighter than the previous LEDs that I used. They have a slightly bluish tint uh, and that's because they're about a 6,000 Kelvin color range. So we'll continue on and do three more of these. Okay, so now we're about to wire up our relay board. Um, we just need to do some wire angling and just think of this as four independent little switches, but inline switches. You don't just con connect the positive and the negative to a particular point and hope for it to actuate. It's actually an inline um, situation. If you don't understand what I'm talking about, it doesn't really matter. This will be pretty clear as to how wiring this up goes. Um, so let's get wiring and wrangling some wires and moving on. 
All right, so what I have done is I've got a terminal block there as well. Um, I just find those convenient, so I'll use one of those. And I've got an extra piece of um, two pieces of wire, and that's for the positive and the negative on this input power for the actual board itself. Right, so let's wire up. First things first, let's just connect to the positive and the negative wires to these blocks. Okay, so we've got positive and negative wire there. Now all of the positives get tied together. Right, it's just the easiest way to do it. Tie all of the positives together and that's why I'm using that terminal block to be able to pull those all together. But you can twist them together if you like or even solder them together, however you want to manage your wiring. But all of the positives, including the positive from the relay board, all come together in one point. All the negatives are connect to each of the commons. So remember which one you wanted where. So the very first block is the first one that I want activated, which was that center run right near the center, which is this connection here. So I want this common connected to that common. That's number two, that's number three, that's number four. And just put the commons, uh, the negative, the black wires, into that common port. Okay, so what we've got there is all of the positives, all of the um, power connections, all in one point, and all of the ground wires going to their respective blocks, so their respective tiers, if you like. So now what we need to do is we need to connect a negative input to each of the normally opened ports. So if you have a look, remember on the actual board itself, there is an NO normally open and an NC normally closed. We want the normally open connections. So all we're really doing here is connecting all of the normally opens to a negative connection, which create a circuit once the relay is closed. Now you connect all of the black into the other side of that terminal block or twist them together and connect them together all as one, uh, however you want to do that. Okay, so now that we've finished connecting everything up, before you go any further, it's a good idea to just hook up 12 volts, connect 12 volts to this terminal block or whatever you've used. Uh, and just to make sure everything's actually working uh, and that the remote's synced up to this little board and everything's right to continue before we hook up the actual inline fuse and the barrel jack and finish off a few bits and pieces. So let's test it now. One bank, two banks, three banks, and four. And off, off. 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 Okay, so I'm now just going to connect up the inline fuse and the external power barrel jack. And for the back half, we're pretty much right. Just need to do some wire angling, a bit of black tape, some hot glue, whatever you feel like doing on the back. Um, not very pretty looking, but uh, at the moment I'm going for functional. So I'll fix this up, hook up the fuse and the barrel jack, and then we'll get on to the diffused glass front. Okay, I'm pretty much happy with the way everything's going to sit here on the back as to locations. I want this area up here free for a future addition to this, but at the moment this will do fine. Alright, so let's just uh, glue all this down and realistically we're done with the back. Alright, so one last test using the actual 12 volt supply uh, that I intend to use for this. So let's just plug this in, make sure everything's working. All right, so everything is plugged in, hooked up and powered. So let's just make sure that the uh, panel still works. Success. All right, so it's time to put this back into the picture frame. So grab your picture frame. Okay, so that's all in, fold down those tabs, and at that point, you actually have 
uh, a functional LED light panel, but we're going to put that glass back over the front for a diffused uh, look, because otherwise it's quite stark. So in order to do that, there's a couple of different ways. I'll probably end up 3D printing some brackets and things like that to make it look a little bit better, but not everyone has access to a 3D printer, so the easiest thing I came up with is using bulldog clips. So basically, we're just talking about these kinds of clips here. Now you can use two, three or four of these, it doesn't really matter, um, two is probably the minimum. Now you can either fix them by gluing or by drilling a hole through them and just screwing them in. Um, because mine's going to be reasonably temporary at this point in time, I'm just going to glue them on. Uh, but if you are gluing and not doing a, a drill hole, putting a screw in there holding this in, considering the bottom one will be holding quite a lot of that weight, um, I would suggest that you use a good amount of super glue, not just hot glue, and that you rough up that surface underneath, or rough it up quite significantly so that there's a lot of bite in there. Even rough up the actual outside of the bracket, uh, outside of the clip as well. Okay, so we're just going to sand this up, and all I'm using is a, an old piece of, I think it's 120 grit. It is 120 grit sandpaper, and I'm just going to use a circular motion and just completely cover the glass area. Uh, just keep going until you're pretty much satisfied with your finish and if you've got access to a power sander even better. Let's sand some glass. Okay, so this is how delicate this glass is. I was just pushing on it doing the sanding and as you can see I've got a number of hairline cracks through that. So realistically I'm not comfortable using that piece of glass for continuing sanding it. So I'll set that one aside and dispose of it. But what I did have is an old um, I think this was about $8 off eBay, and it's an old diffuser light, which is torn. Um, this is a, for a little portable LED light of sorts. So I'm just going to cut these ripped parts off the back and use this as the diffuser and mount it on the light, see how we go. Okay, so just to mount this diffuser panel onto the frame, I've just used a couple of screws, the clips, unless I drill a hole through them and screw them into the frame. Uh, probably won't hold properly. So a couple of screws at the moment are holding that in there. So let's have a look and see what it looks like. So what I'll do is I'll kill all the lights here and set this up and take a look at it as the uh, lighting source for everything that's going on right now. That's with one, two, three, and all four operating. So that even diffused is quite bright light. Uh, obviously by itself it's um, not going to be a, a lighting solution for you, but as a uh, light properly as another very very handy LED light panel with a diffused front. So thanks very much for joining me. Uh, not everything goes according to plan and I'm happy to share the things that don't work out the way I hoped they would have when I started off. Um, but if you liked the video please give it a thumbs up and I hope you'll join me again next time.